All right. In today's episode, we have Yana, from, an actor from New York City, who booked her first major credit on the show Bull, and the guest star role. First credit, guest star role. What a start. I mean, can't ask for a better start, right? Uh, I agree. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate thank it. You thank you for you having me. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Yana. Um, we'll start with some context. That's how we usually do in these episodes. So we'll start with how many years have you been acting before you booked the show Bull? Um, I don't have, well, I do have a number, but it's not that easy with me. So I started acting slash dancing when I was five years old uh, in Slovakia, where I'm from, uh, but never had a chance to try TV or film because where I was, there just wasn't opportunities. And then I came to this country when I was 19 years old and uh, finished college and was still dancing um, in New York. So I was very used to be on stage and, you know, love that. So I did some theater when I was younger and, you know, love, love being on stage. But then two years ago, year and a half ago, year, two years ago, I decided that I want to do what I always wanted to try to do and, you know, get on TV. So a little bit less than two years, I would say, when you're asking really about the TV and film okay. acting, that I would say a year and a half. Okay. So that- wow. Okay. Yeah. Not that long. Year and a half. Wow. That's a great story. Um, okay. So during this year and a half, right, I would say that's when it probably really, really, you know, you took it seriously and, you know, training for TV and film. During that time, if you can remember how many auditions, like I'm talking about very specifically co-star, guest star, recurring, you know, network TV auditions did you have before you booked Bull? Very little. I had maybe, I had maybe four or five auditions. So, you know, you hear that some people get that a week (laughs) and I believe that, but, you know, with, I'm very specific as Lots of us are, but with the accent, I do not expect to get five auditions a week because as of now, and maybe, and I hope it will change one day, but as of now, I think I'm in the box, you know, where casting directors put me when, you know, when the accent is needed, that's where I am. And, you know, again, I'm hoping that one day it's going to change. I just started, Um, but I didn't have a lot of auditions. So when this one came, it was great because you know it was it's not just two lines and I I don't mean just two lines you know but it was you know big big role so yeah it was great okay so four or five uh but it's good to be I mean you're very specific sure but then you're so right when they do call you in you probably have a higher chance because it's your it's your role exactly exactly so So I know everybody's a little different I understand yeah Mm -hmm. uh okay so four or five auditions I would say and then um, so during that time did you have like all your materials in order like reels headshots did you have an agent all that stuff right so I right off the bat I knew that I needed headshots so I got that very early on you know once I started taking classes a year and a half ago so I I did have a headshots professionally done in New York um, and I did have and I still do have a manager um, but to be honest with you, I didn't get the audition because of the manager. So to everybody who is not represented, um, I got it from class, you know, taking a class and being in the community. So, you know, if you are representing, great. But if you are not, yeah. take classes, you know, get in front of casting directors because that's how I got my role. And, you know, everyone's journey and story is different. But again, you know, don't, don't think that you need to have representation to get a role. You don't. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. So, really quickly, uh, with the context, two years of acting, you know, film and TV, four or five auditions, um, and you have had like headshots, reels, and managers. Um, but then uh, you've also been real, doing. I, yeah, 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 the reel. And that's the one thing I didn't touch on. So, I had two student films on my reel. And I had um, clips that I did myself. Um, so that was my reel when I booked it. And I don't even know if they saw it or not. You know, it wasn't very good quality, you know. Um, 
since the bull, I took that off my websites and my, you know, and just have a bull there. But, you know, if you're asking what kind of reel I had, I had what I had, you know, I had two, again, I had two students film and I think three tiny short clips that I made myself. Okay. Yeah. Just a little bit of something. Yeah. Okay. And then you took casting director workshops. So that was, uh, that was huge. So we'll talk about that more. Um, okay. So clearly we know what's going on here. And then, uh, so let's talk about audition day. You know, let's talk about that. Um, what, what were you, what were you doing? Like on that particular day, what were you doing? What's happening in your life? Well, the audition was self tape because, you know, we live in the self tape market. I mean, self tape world right now. Um, I actually never had in-person audition. Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting for that, that it's going to be interesting, but you know, so um, I got, it was Tuesday when I got uh, an email from the manager that I got this audition and it was due on Thursday. Um, but I sent it in the day earlier, I sent it on Wednesday. Um, and because it was monologue, it was easier for me to tape it because I didn't need a, you know, a reader and I just send off my kids to school in the morning and just went to my little studio where I'm sitting right now. And I just taped it and sent it right in um, because I just, I just got her. I just got her. I got Zasha with, you know, my name. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was, you know, so I turned it in the day earlier. Okay. And how did you prep for the role? I know it was like a huge monologue, a lot of lines. Um, so did you uh, like hire somebody to prep with or did you do it yourself? And is it because you've been in class so you know what to do by yourself? So what was going, how did you prep? I did it myself. Honestly, again, this was such a, it was so right for me, I think. That there was not many questions and I knew what I wanted to do with it. And I did have um, experience in the past that I had auditioned and I did it the way I thought I wanted to be. And then I got coached by somebody who shouldn't be coaching me. And then, oh. so I did it the way they told me and it was a mess. So this one, I said to myself, and listen, I'm not definitely get a help, you know, but this one specific was just like, I wanted to do it my way. And I, um, there were no questions for me, you know, very often they are, and you're not sure, you know, um, this one was different. This one, I said, I, I just don't want anybody to, you know, to mess with yeah. it. So <laughs> I picked two best takes and I sent it to my coach, James Ticconi. And I said, is this is what I have. What do you think? And he said, no adjustments. That's perfect. Like, you know, cause I think it really was, you know, um, and I remember showing it, showing my tape before I send it to my husband, um, who is not an actor. And I remember his face when he was watching it. And I'm like, that's it. I, I you know what? It, it's just because I let him watch everything. And I, you know, and I tried to bounce things off of him, even though he's not an actor. And I just saw his face changing and he was like, yeah, that's good. That's good. You know, so I just like, I knew that that this just, you know, was real to me. Um, so that's what got me the role. I was um, booked off the tape. I didn't have a callback, um, but I think I'm going too quick with it. If you had any other question, and it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's interesting because you know you you know you you just knew you made a choice. You knew yourself. You were you know you you understood the part. And even after that, you still sent it to James just in case to get a get any feedback because you trust him as well, right? Um, Absolutely. And you did that, and I mean. It was, it was perfect. I mean, I guess you sent it in, sent it in early, you know, that's good. Um, did you, what about, what about a reader? I'm just curious. Uh, who's your reader usually? It's usually it's my husband. <laughs> this one, you didn't need anyone because it was just a monologue. Okay. So it worked well. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay, cool. Let's, uh, so you send it in now. All right. Now, uh, when you send it in, did you, so you, did you feel confident? Did you feel like you, uh, Got it, or you had no idea? You I felt I felt so confident and so unsure because <laughs> you know it. I felt confident about the work I did mm -hmm. that I knew I nailed. I just there was just I felt really good about that, you know. But you don't know what they want, 
you know, you don't know what they're going to go with. So that's, you know, even, but it was still good because I felt very proud of that tape. And I, so that was enough for me to just, okay, you know, if they won't cast me, maybe they like the work and they'll, send, you know, call me back again. So I was not sure of anything, but I was, I was confident that the work was good. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to tell. I mean, sometimes there've been tapes where I thought, I mean, I got to book this, you know, but then you don't hear back those times where, ah, oh, whatever, I don't care. And then that ends up being the one you get. I mean, just, you don't just, you won't know, right? There's so many external factors and, um, ah, yeah, I know what you mean, but it's always interesting to hear how people felt, you know, when they sent it in. Um, <clears throat> it's always different, right? Be with people, but, uh, okay. So now you send it in, now you're done, your job is done. And um, let's talk about the day when you do get the good news, you know. Uh, who, who called you? What were you, what were you doing during that time? Yeah. So it actually took a week to get the final, you got the job. Um, the tape was due on Thursday and the next day, Friday afternoon, I was driving to Vermont to ski. And, um, you know, at that point I'm like, all right, I didn't get it, I guess, you know? Um, and then later, late, I think it's 7 PM, my manager texted me. She said, just got an email, um, you are in the mix. Mm. I said, okay, great. And then you don't hear again a few days and you make a piece, all right, well, I was in the mix, I got close. When you think, okay, this is it. Um, then they, she got another email saying that uh, strong interest, or maybe it was the other way around. Maybe first email was strong interest and the second one was that I was in the mix. I said, well, what does it mean? How many people are there in a mix? You know, like all these questions are unanswered. You don't know. Um, and then, it, so it took full week. Uh, it was Friday when I got a phone call from a manager. I was at home. I remember I was in one room in my house and I remember my phone started to ring. And, you know, these days it's usually text messages. So, you know, first second I was like, oh my gosh, it's ringing. <laughs> and when I saw it was her, we usually text. I thought that, you know, she's probably calling me to tell me that I got it. Um, and she did. So it was, wow. you know, it was a great feeling. Because, and um, there were some happy tears. <laughs> and I think it was just a week of just the tension. And, you know, did I get it? Did I, you know, that all that just, you know, with that phone call, you just had to like sit down and share and you got it, you know? So it was, there were some happy tears for sure. <laughs> Oh, yeah, these updates, right? Hey, you're in the mix, uh, you know, um, you're unavailable. Like, it's just, you know, come on, just decide already. Yes or no. Uh. Right. And, you know, you, you want to you wanna tell them, don't let me know until I book, but they have to because the dates were changing. So they're checking. So every, those two emails, they were also checking if I'm still available because, um, you know, they had, they had a COVID shutdown and they had, you know, there was some snowstorm. So the dates were moving and they just kept making sure that I'm still available before they, you know, so there was, yeah. you can, you can sometimes say, well, don't tell me till I'm booked. You know, don't tell me I'm in a mix or, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Especially now with COVID, you know, the schedule keeps changing and it's ridiculous. Like I, you know, Ariana, you know, from the community, from, yeah. the, uh, she, you know, when Love I talked to her. Yeah, we, th we talked about how her shoot dates like kept push getting pushed every week and it took like four weeks of just and then apparently even when she got on set, she uh, I mean, the episode is going to come out. I don't know why I'm telling you about this, but still she um, she was on set and then it was so cold. They sent her back home like, you know, and then she had to come back another day. So it was just uh, for her experience it was ridiculous. So many days of just yeah. getting switched. Um, OK. Yeah. Okay, great. I mean, it's like happy tears. Hey, that's, I, I get it. You know, I don't blame you. Um, okay, so now you booked. So let's talk about what happens next. Uh, did they call you for fitting? Um, COVID tests, what happened next? All of it. So the same, you know, it's funny, like nothing is happening and then everything happens that day. You know, you get lots of emails from the production, from director, they, you know, welcome this and, you know, from the hair and about the testing now, you know, it's additional things you have to go through. Um, so, and, you know, text messages and, you know, they wanted to, they wanted me to send my selfie just for hair and makeup, you know, to get ready before I get, go. Then I had to go test it, to get tested, I think Sunday, two days later, yeah, I had to go, which was again, um, 
snowing and I was driving to New York and, you know, just in time and like driving back home through the snow. And then I was, Monday was off. There was a holiday. I forget what it was. And then Tuesday I had to go for fitting. Uh, so they, you know, they have to test you two days before you go to your first fitting. And uh, Tuesday I went for fitting and I think Wednesday or Thursday was my first day um, on the set, which is, you know, again, about COVID, um, I remember when I booked and I was talking to James actually, and he said, calm down. Now you're, you know, you, you, you did it. It's good. And, and he said, nobody can take it away from you now. And I'm like, except COVID, <laughs> COVID still can, you know? So it's like, I just said, and I didn't tell anybody till I was like last day of shooting. And I said, anybody, like my husband knew and my mom knew and nobody else knew because I was so scared of that to be taken away from me. So I said, it's so not fair. It's so hard for us actors to get there, to book, to get audition and then, you know, to go all through that and then book and then still, you just don't know, you know, and you get tested three times a week and every time you're waiting for the result, the result and, you know, so there was additional stress of it all, but, you know, that's what it is um, right now. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally get it. I saw, I heard a story about an actor who booked a job. Um, he needs to be on set on a Monday, right? And he was, um, he, he, was, he was put in a hotel for the weekend mm -hmm. and he was tested on Thursday and Friday, okay, before the weekend. And he, he tested uh, negative. And then he was, he was in the hotel room for the weekend and he thought, I'm all good. But then he needs to be tested one more time before on set on Monday. On Monday, the test became positive. They sent him back home and he was, he couldn't understand. And then he was starting to tell people, guys, the COVID thing's real because he must have caught it two weeks ago and then the symptoms finally mm. caught up. So he was saying, yeah. sometimes it might not happen right away. You know, you could, it could have been like a week before, two weeks before. So he was just trying to say how actors, especially when we get the job, when we are there, you know, you know, as much as you want to go out and stuff, you know, at least for your career, take it seriously. So that story really hit me. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, not that I was going out, but still I became extra careful, even more. Same, yeah. same, you know, and I said, there's another thing, like, you know, when I booked it, it was Friday and, you know, and I said, I can't even celebrate. I cannot go to a restaurant and just like, you know, cause I, you know, I was just, I'm not going anywhere. You know, I was even considering keeping my kids at home um, for those two weeks when I was, shooting um to, you know for them to go virtually at school because you just wanted to you know uh, but that didn't happen but you know i any anything i didn't have to do you know i i just didn't do i just like wanted to go set and home and just you know so yeah. it's addition you know we have to be careful yeah. extra careful okay so uh, now how many days were you required to be on set i was on set six days Six days. Wow. Mm -hmm. So wow, two weeks. That's, that's yeah, like so a, that's like the, like a, a week full of, like, that's like the proper guest star role, I would say. Right. It, yeah. 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 Sorry. It was, no, it, um, so the episode, it takes two weeks. Uh, we had all Monday off. It again, was some kind of holiday. Um, so I worked three days first week and then three days second week before <laughs> um and they were not sure because they don't they don't know how long or you know it's going to take certain things so there's that like extra um okay. but, you know you hear how fast tv moves mm. and he does um you know you you said oh you had such a you know you had that monologue that i was auditioning with well on friday so okay so first week um i, I was really lucky because my first two days on the set were my non-speaking scenes. Mm. So as somebody who never did background, I never did that. And I, I think it's a really good thing to do. Um, not always, but maybe a day or two, just to see what is going on and what's happening, you know. Um, it's funny, you know, we take all these classes and on the camera, this and that, but there's not really many classes when, like, when you book and when you're actually on the set. And uh, you'll figure it out, you know. Uh, but it, it could be helpful if, you know, somebody tells you these little, just a few things, like what is going to happen. Um, because one thing you don't want to, you don't want to slow anybody down and you don't want to be unprofessional and God forbid not be on time and all that, you know, you're just a little tiny. I don't care how big your guest star role is. You're just this little tiny, you know, 
part yeah. of a big machine that, you know, you better make, you know, you better keep things moving. So I was really lucky to have first day, first two days of my, it just happened like that, you know, uh, when I got the script and it was just so cool because I got the whole thing that was written so far and your name is there and, you know, the whole thing, it's huge, Anna Jolzig, and it was pretty cool. Uh, so I saw, and you, you know, you get a schedule um, and I saw the first two days I'm doing my not speaking role. So even though, you know, there's no nonverbal acting, you know, I still, at least I didn't have to worry about my lines. So that was amazing for me. It just worked out great because I got two days of seeing everything what's going to happen when I, it's my turn to, you know, to speak. And, you know, so it was just amazing experience. So I just thought to myself, I'm like, okay, because obviously there were some um, people who were extras. Mm -hmm. I thought, so, okay, that's, you know, that's something I think for somebody who's starting, not bad to try to get uh, on a set, you know, in a different way um, to just get that day or two experience of like what's going on. Um, so I had that, you know, those two days. So those, those were the first two days. And then um, on Thursday, as I was leaving the set, I got an email that there's going to be a new scene mm. that I'm going to be shooting <laughs> on Friday next day opposite Michael Weatherly. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so I was like, wait, what? What? Big tomorrow? There's a new scene I haven't seen. Um, so, you know, to the point that TV moves fast, like, you know, so I got, I got my, um, I got that scene, I got a uh, size day before as I'm, I was leaving, you know, the set. It, it was the elevator scene. I don't know if you saw the episode. So I had like four lines. So that was good. But I'm trying to say is they really do, you know, change things on a beat. And, you know, um, so there was one thing that changed very quickly. And another thing what happened was that my monologue that I auditioned with was rewritten. And all of a sudden it became three times as long. You know, the length just <laughs> so great, you know, now I'm like my mind like it's two minutes, but, you know, and again, um, I got my, I got it on Friday after we're done shooting and we're, you know, next following Monday, it was, you know, we're shooting that scene, my monologue. Um, so again, I, but I had a weekend, it was fine, you know, it was, you know, that's not a problem to remember and, you know, whatnot, but again, they just... And I knew it's going to be rewritten because it said it might be rewritten, but you kind of just like don't know till last minute. And then, you know, they, they just added so much more to it. Um, and so there was, there was also quick change, you know? I mean, this is, this, what you're saying is like, uh, like a lot of advice, you know, actors should really take it seriously because this is where training comes into play. You know, that's why people, that's why uh, casting directors want to trust people with training and with credits who have been on set already. This is exactly why, you know, like these new lines can be thrown at you, uh, new scenes can be thrown at you, and you have to adapt. You have to be prepared. That's your job. And, 100%. you know, that's, that's why the trust, you know, is not there when you don't have any credits. You know, it's really hard to book that first credit, usually, usually. Um, that's, that's the challenge. And that's why you got to be prepped with all kinds of training, you know, because when you're 100%. on set, yeah, even then you're still thrown into a new situation, like you said, it's, you can't pre prepare for that. You have to be on set. Um, extras, yeah, like you said, I totally agree, at least once or twice, just to get a feel for how things work, how fast they work, and how organized they are, the rules, the etiquette, just the way they move, um, just to get a sense of it. <clears throat> but even then, if you're a principal actress or actor, or, uh, you're still, it's still new because you have to perform now. You have to, uh, you know, it's, it's a completely different environment. But I, I'm glad the two days that you got helped you uh, get into the family of Bull, get yeah. into the crew, like get used to it, get familiar, get comfortable. So yeah, that was very helpful. I'm I'm really curious though. Like it, it was like you said, the monologue changed, and uh, were you at all intimidated? Like how many like how many takes did you do? <clears throat> did you discuss it with the um, director, writer, like all that interactions? Tell me what happened on set. Yeah. So uh, actually the interaction happened before the set, before we started. Um, there was one meeting that I had was with the director, yeah. a Zoom meeting before we started. I think next day or two days later, um, I met with her over the Zoom. Um, and 
it was funny because, you know, we're talking and she said, oh, we loved your take. Oh, we knew you are going to, we love, you got her. And I'm like, why, why it took a week for you two guys to tell me? We're just like, you know, of course they're not going to, you know, they, they're, they're busy with other things. But it was funny because she said, oh, you totally understood her. You understood Zasha. You understood what's going on. And I think that's what, if I didn't, that what, what the meaning was for, you know, like if, if I had any questions and, you know, she just wanted to get to know me, which was amazing because then once you're on a the set, there's somebody familiar, you know, her director. And I don't know if all directors do that. Yeah. It was just my one experience, but it was really helpful. So we talked about Zasha. We talked about the backstory, you know, and uh, what I thought, what she thought. And um, so, so I'm ready for the day of shooting. You know what I mean? So she doesn't have to talk to me about that on the set because on the set everything moves fast and you know it's a long day those are long days so she doesn't have time to talk to me about you know Zasha's backstory so we, we did that before okay okay and on set when you when you were shooting the monologue um how many takes did you do um I I want to say well here's the thing you you take you do you do takes from different angles or like well you are the same but the camera you know you maybe do two three takes when your the camera is right on your face and then you do two or three when the camera is like zooming out for the rest you know so and then she would just take um maybe second half of the monologue which again preparation is so important because i didn't need she just told me okay start with that line and i would be like okay because she didn't need the whole thing she needed she, she knew she wanted to you know probably have on camera my face when I started and then as I was talking the camera changed camera angles you know so she would just say okay just start with that line and just go to the end you know and they were shooting it from different angle or, or they were taking reactions of people behind me you know so you do it you do it quite a few times but you know you might not be on camera you know you're just they're just getting reactions of other people yeah. so if I really have to tell probably a few yeah. times but all together you know like just, you know, they probably, she, um, it depends what, what she wants, you know, I, that one and only adjustment, um, and that will speak faster because this is, you know, it's a TV. So she just wanted me to speak faster. And there was actually one thing that James said after, um, I already booked and he said, you will have to talk faster because this is a TV. And he was absolutely correct. That was one adjustment or one thing she wanted me to do. So she let me do it two times what I prepared and you know but then sometimes they don't know what they want you know so they need to have different takes so I don't even know if she used the one where I'm speaking faster you know once they're cutting and they see what's better and then you know sometimes they they have 43 minutes let's say to to shoot but they they, they shot 46 so they need somewhere to you know chop it up and or they use maybe fast me talking faster because it saved them 30 seconds so you know, you have to be, again, prepared to just change right there, you know. Um, so yeah. there was one adjustment that, you know, yeah. you just have to speak faster. Yeah, like you said, uh, got to know the tone of the show, um, <clears throat> see how fast they move. So it all, it, there's so many other things, right? It's not just about, oh, I want to do it my way. The acting, sure, there's acting, but there's also the other things that's required by, for an actor. <clears throat> um, and that was my thing, you know, like my monologue, I'm talking about my deceased uh, husband and about my baby who so you know you just you can't just speak fast but you also have to you know and she let me do it slower and faster so but but you, again like what you said you want to do it your way but you can it's just it's not you know it's, yeah it's, it's not a decision because it wouldn't work you know so yeah. so these six days on set um it's a guest star role talk to me about like how you were treated because i know you know it could have been like really like amazing with the crew because now you get to spend more time with the crew because you see them every day it's not just a one day thing where hi bye you know um <clears throat> talk, talk to me about the trailer makeup people crew just anything you want to talk about six days how you were treated like a guest star how did you feel so um everybody's super nice everybody's very professional everybody expects you to be very professional um but the thing is that it's COVID. So it's not your typical hanging out by crafties. And, you know, so we had to be in our rooms, you know, between the sets, which, you know, can get a little lonely and whatnot. And you're on your phone, it's fine. But again, because it's different right now, 
you know, so between the sets, they wanted us back in our trailers or rooms, depending on what, you know, we were shooting um, in the studios for a few days and then three or four days we were um, two different locations. That's where you have trailers. So that's different, you know, just by itself, just, you know, like the extras people um, couldn't mingle with us. They had their own area, you know, and when they were changing the set every single time we had to leave, we, we meaning actors had to leave. So we are not, so they're trying to separate people as much as possible. You know, they have these zones. So if God forbid somebody has COVID in one zone, they're trying to, you know, just keep it there and not spread it. So, so times a little different, you know, but um, I was lucky because on that day, uh, on Friday, I remember it was Friday, um, the news thing I was, um, I did with Michael Weatherly, um, it was just him and me and uh, we were in the lobby and um, there were couches in the corner. So we were able to, they didn't have, they didn't make us to go back and forth all the time because well, he's Michael Weatherly. <laughs> so they, they let us just be, you know, um, and it was so cold, you know, so I, I had a couple of hours with him um, just talking and I mean, the director too. And um, he is so funny and such a lovely guy. And um, my husband is Serbian and his wife is Serbian. So we had that connection right off the bat and, you know, all that travel in Europe. And um, so I got, I, I was lucky to have that, that I didn't have to be in my trailer for, for at least that. And then one more day we were in a prison um in Staten Island and again our trailers are were really far and it was windy and cold and every time we would walk it was mess up our hair so they again let us they got us shares and we were you know separated but we we're kind of in this hallway uh or all the co-stars and guest stars so there was again another day when you know we could talk and get a little bit closer because other than that it, it was you know very separated because they have to they're really strict, you know, about the masks and about, you know, separating people. So times are a little bit different in that, you know, um, but other than that, everybody's super nice. You know, I still am in contact with other people from the set and, you know, my makeup girl, you know, she's amazing. So, so you know, you actually make these connections that continue, you know, which I don't know if I expect it, you know, so it's, it's very nice. Even with the little, you know, we are actors, we like other people, you know, so you find your ways to, you know, um, to communicate and, you know, to, but, you know, everybody, everybody, you know, they treat you so well and professional, but everybody, there's so many people on the set and everybody has their own job, but they all know what they're doing, obviously. So that even more makes me feel that I need to be on my game. Like there's no, I knew there was no way I'm going to forget my, my lines. There's no way I'm going to be messing them up. We actually did my scene way quicker than expected. And I think part of it was because I was so well prepared. And I'm not saying that's just like, you know, but I just said to myself, I'm like, I'm not, you know, there's no way I'm forgetting my lines or something. And you know, the thing actually that would happen with monologue was we were in a prison. And as I said, it was super windy that day. And there was this banging noise coming from hallway. You know, they, there was something that was just kept banging with the wind. And I didn't know that because I, I just came for my monologue. And as I'm doing it and we are shooting this, like, bang, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, as I'm doing my scene, like, is anybody going to say something? Like, are, are you going to, like, cut and, you know, and, you know, they, they'll, they'll take it off the video so you don't hear it. But to me, again, you know, my first experience, I was just like, nobody knows. So, but, um, you know, you couldn't tell on my face because I was, you know. And then um, uh, one of other actors, Cypress, he was, he was uh, the guy who went to prison. Mm -hmm. um, so, he, you know, he had a big, big guest star. He said after he was like, oh my gosh, like your focus, it was amazing with the banging and you just didn't even, and I think again, it's the preparation. Like you have to be prepared for everything and just know your lines and know your choices and know your feelings and all that because nothing can throw you off. I can't imagine that it would be like, oh, anybody, you know, and that everybody would be like, well, just keep going. But, you know, so just be prepared when you're going on a set. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't actually stop with the banging noise. I guess and that, ba that banging continued. That there wasn't, you know, it was, I was, I think, tarf. Tar they had some something covered, and, but they know they can get rid of that noise, you know, but 
I'm t- it was loud. It wasn't just like little something, you know, because otherwise everybody's super quiet, right? It's like, you know, so he just was, he just was giving me so many compliments. He said, oh my gosh, you're focused. I was watching you and you just were, you were just, it's not there. Like you just, you know, it's, then it's not there and you just have to, you know, um, I heard about, I heard about actor who had a co-star and he had to be replaced, not on bull, because oh. he was supposed to sit while doing his scene, but then they changed it. And he was supposed to walk, right? And and like do his scene walking, not sitting, and he just couldn't get it together. And he had to be replaced because they just gave him so many. So be prepared for anything, you know. But I think once you are really well prepared, you can handle those yeah. balls they throw at you. And yeah, again, it's it, nothing, not, nothing on purpose. You know, I think you should be prepared for banging and you should be prepared for walking. You know, it's not like they're trying to make it difficult for you, but these things change. Yeah. Yeah, it's like making those strong choices when you're doing scene study and you're obsessed with that choice. You can't get out of it. You know, you're like, you made that choice. This is how I'm going to do it for all the time. And then when you, when you get feedback, yeah, you don't know, you're stuck. You know, it's, yeah, it's very similar. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Did you, when, when you rap, did you get clapped out? Yes, yes, yes. That was really sweet. And again, you know, um, when other main characters were leaving and they knew it was the last day, like Michael Weatherly, they, they came, you know, and Freddie, they came and they say bye. And they didn't have to, you know, like they just, because you know what, you are their colleagues, you know, you know might be for two weeks, but you are, you're not less than, even though, you know, they're so, and that's how they treat you. Like I have, to, you know, like, yes, their trail is probably bigger, but you know, other than that, it's, it's, you are equal, you are sharing the set, you know, so, and that's how they're treating me. Like I, you know, there was no, oh, you just came for two weeks and you have done cool stuff, you know, guest star. No, they, I mean, they didn't have to, but they treated me that nice, but they did, everybody. So, yeah. It's one thing I can yeah. in my personal experience too. It, being on set is like the most professional, most comfortable. Honestly, I mean, it feels more of a family than my actual family sometimes, you know, some, some people have even described that, you know, they find that being on set is more of a family than their actual family. It's so nice, efficient, professional. Um, you know, it's like it's such a good teamwork, you know, to get things done, to get to perfection. And uh, no matter who you are, you know, sometimes even yeah. you're a co-star, you, you still get like, you, you're being treated well, you know, everybody greets you. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, that's, that's, the, that's why you want to be on set all the time. You, you hear yeah. these things. That's why I do this in the first place. Like I'm talking to you. Today, I'm probably going to be extremely motivated, you know, uh, because I talk to you and then hearing this, like these videos, I do that for that reason. You visualize yourself on set. Oh, this is what happens. That one, you know, because I've no, I, I've not, I'm not done a guest star yet. So me hearing you talk about two weeks on set, six days and all these obstacles and, and all the good stuff makes you visualize. And then I'm ready. You know, I feel good about yeah. it. So, yeah. Throw it in the universe. It's going to happen, you know? Um, okay, so we'll, we'll conclude with two questions, two last questions. Um, just according to you, what made you book this role? Like, was it anything specific or was it just a bunch of things? Like, just according to you, out of all, the other auditions you didn't get, you know, the four or five auditions you didn't get, just wondering what do you think, why you got this one? I think I was right for it. I think I was right for, you know, you, you think that, that, you know, sometimes, maybe for, sometimes, maybe actor isn't ready and it's maybe too green, but I honestly think for the most part, you're just not right for it. So don't beat yourself down. And I really see it. Like, why was it so easy for me to get Sasha? Because I think I was really, that was my role. Like, you know, I, it was just, I, that's what I was telling my husband when I first didn't hear if, you know, if I mean mix or something, I thought I didn't get it. And I said, but I really liked her. Like, I just loved her, you know, like I, and she was, you know, she's wife of a mob and, you know, and, th- but I loved her and I just like, it, I was her, you know, I think it was, I was just so right for it that it wasn't any other way. I think that's what made me book it. Yes. Was I ready in terms of, because I, I've been taking, I've been studying like a mad woman since I started. Um, yes, you have to. You can't just, you know, so do you, you need to take classes and you need to study like there's no tomorrow. 
So yeah, I had that already, but I also was right for the role. So I, I don't think you can do if you only have one, you just can't book the role if you are an amazing actor, but you're not you know, right for it. And you can be right as much as you want to, but if you don't have training and you, you know, then, so yeah. they both yeah. have to be there.